Our next guest, one of the people responsible for sending people to Mars, Dr. Michael Hawes, graduated from Notre Dame a year after I did. He graduated in 1978, a degree in aerospace engineering. He actually did something with his degree, and he has put it to good use. After a long career at NASA, he is now vice president at Lockheed Martin. Uh, program manager for Orion, the next generation spacecraft that will take people to Mars and beyond. Thank you for joining us tonight. It's great to be here. Um, I guess just briefly, how daunting a challenge is it, the very idea of sending people to Mars? Well, Mars is hard. There's no question about that, Steve. You, you, need, uh, you need to protect the crews. You're in a different radiation sure. environment. You need to have all the supplies. The mission's going to be a long time. You're going to need living space. You're going to need extra propulsion. So all of those things are challenges that uh, are still ahead of us, but we're working on them. You know, we were talking uh, briefly before about the, the moonshot, and I said how I was just so into it. I built the whole model and the command module and the LEM, and Walter Cronkite and I would, would follow every step of the mission. This is a whole different challenge. That was, what, three days to get to the that moon? That was three days to get to the moon. So I, built, I built that same model, you know, but <laughs> now I build spaceships, so it's a little bit different. Yeah. So uh, a trip to Mars is about six months to get there. Wow. Because of the alignment of the planets, you're going to be there either for 30 days or for a year. And then you're going to take six to eight months to come back. So we talk about missions being around 1,000 days in length. What are considerations that you have to make in building spacecraft for a challenge like that, that you wouldn't maybe for some other shorter or, or less dramatic. So conditions. just just the ability to uh, protect the crew for that long of a time. All of your uh, components have to be highly reliable. They have to be redundant strings, like we have four strings of flight computers and and all of those systems. Uh, and then you just have to have the ability to have all of the supplies, food, water. Uh, you may actually send supplies out to Mars before the crew gets there and wow. then have them join up with them when they get to Mars orbit. All right, Orion is the project. We have a brief clip I want to share with you so you have a little understanding of what we're looking at here. Wow, it's just beautiful on the launch pad like that. Tell us about this test. So the, the test here was really to demonstrate some of the most critical systems on Orion, the heat shield system. Uh, similar to Apollo, we haven't done this style of heat shield since then. This was on a Delta IV heavy booster uh, from uh, the Kennedy Space Center down in Florida. Test was hugely successful, uh, demonstrated almost all of the systems that the capsule needs to fly. Uh, not the human pieces, that's what we're working on now, but uh, everything went actually beautifully. What will people find when they actually get to Mars? Well, so think about how we explore Mars today. We explore Mars with rovers. There is, you know, 20 plus minutes of delay time between when you send a command and when the rover sends a response or sends the data they've collected. So we think there's actually compelling missions even in Mars orbit where the sure. astronauts are right there running rovers without that delay time. Uh, we've looked at concepts of rovers, hoppers, uh, UAVs flying through the Mars atmosphere, uh, covering a whole lot more than we can today with the way that we explore. It is science, not science fiction, that's for sure. It is, absolutely. That's for sure. Mark Haas, thank you so much thank for joining you, us on it's this pleasure. Notre Dame Day. Another amazing story from, from a domer.